watching. And in today's video, I want to kill two birds with one stone. First of all, I want to show that A is invertible if and only if its determinant is non-zero. And furthermore, to get this nice identity that the determinant of the inverse of A, it's one over the determinant of A, which is another nice suggestion that A inverse is like one over A. So fact, again, A is invertible, again, square matrices, if and only if the determinant of A is non-zero, and in that case, the determinant of A inverse equals one over the determinant of A. And let me do, um, let me do the direction people are probably interested in. So let's first of all show if A is invertible, then the determinant of A is non-zero, and we get this formula. So if A is invertible, what that means is there is some matrix A inverse such that A A inverse is the identity. And then what we can do, we can put determinants on both sides. So then the determinant of A, A inverse is the determinant of the identity, which is 1. And then we get that the determinant of A times the determinant of A inverse. A inverse equals 1. And by the way, there is no circular reasoning because you'll see the other side, uh, we can prove it like independently of this fact or the multiplicativity of uh, determinants. Now, why does it follow that the determinant is non-zero? Because if the determinant were zero here, you would get zero equals one, which is a problem. So because those, the product of the two things is non-zero, it follows, because we have no zero divisors, that both of those things are non-zero. So that already takes care of one part, and also we can get our identity just by dividing by determinant of A. So if you divide both sides by determinant of A, you get determinant of A inverse. It's one over the determinant of A. So good, we have this formula. What, in my opinion, is equally interesting is the other side. So let's show if the determinant of A is non-zero, then A is invertible. Implies A is invertible. And we'll do it the other way around, by contrapositive. So let's show A is not invertible implies that the determinant is zero. All right. So you have a square matrix that is not invertible. So in particular, the rank of A, it's strictly less than N. And what does that mean? It means that, if in terms of pivots, the number of pivots of A, of A, it's less than n, and in particular, A doesn't have as many pivot rows as possible. So the number of pivot rows of A, it's less than n. So we have some matrix A, and there's a pivot in a bunch of rows, but there is, for example, the last row doesn't have a pivot. What does that mean? In particular, in terms of the row space, it means that the dimension of the row space is less than n, where the row space is just the span of the rows of A. So look, what we have here, we have n rows, and the span of the rows is strictly less than the dimension of Rn. So in particular, what I'm trying to get at it follows then that the rows are linearly dependent. We cannot have that they're all, um, 
linearly independent because otherwise it would also imply that there's a pivot in every row. So what this means is that the rows of A are linearly dependent and in particular what this means is one row of A of A is a linear combo of the other ones. Of the other ones. So for example, you have some row, I don't know, uh, UJ, or I guess UI, which is a linear combo of the other rows. And by the way, not necessarily the last one. This does not necessarily follow. But remember what we're trying to show. We want to show that the determinant of A is zero. Now, if this is like the suspicious row, we can always interchange the rows and put this at the you know, at the top. Now, of course it might affect the determinant because whenever you interchange, it, it, the determinant switches signs. So it definitely affects the determinant, but it does not affect whether it's zero or not. So what I'm saying is, if you're, this is in row three, for example, just switch bunch of rows and put this on the top row. The question of whether it's zero or not, you know, is unaffected by this. So in other words, without loss of generality, assume that the first row is a linear combo of the other ones. So without loss of generality, u1 equals to some linear combo. So a2 u2 plus dot 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 plus a n u n, where a u i are the rows of a. So, oops, that's a different video. How embarrassing. Uh, well, maybe a sneak peek into uh, what do you want to see. Okay, so in particular, what does A look like? A looks as follows. It's of the form, you know, U1, U2, dot, 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 UN. But we know that U1, it's A2, U2 plus dot, 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 plus a n u n, and then u2 up to u n. And now remember, a nice property of the determinant is that it's multilinear. So in other words, it's linear in the first row. So u1 up to u n, that becomes the determinant of a2 u2, dot, 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 plus a n u n, and then u2 up to un, and now it is linear in the first row, so this becomes a2 u2 u2 un plus a3 u3 u2 u3 un up to an un u2 un, and notice this determinant, you know, this matrix has two identical rows. So one of the properties of determinant says this is zero. This one also has two identical rows. So this is zero. And lastly, this has identical rows. So this is also zero. So in other words, what do we get? If A is not invertible, then one row is a linear combo of the other ones. Assume without loss of generality the first row. Then, by using multilinearity, you end up getting that the determinant of A is zero. And therefore, it is true that if A is not invertible, the determinant is zero. And I would like to emphasize, in this part of the proof, we didn't use any multiplicativity or anything. So this proof, you know, um, is independent of the multiplicative fact, uh, which means we don't do any circular reasoning. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.